I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on a warm Wednesday night in Southern California. We're experiencing the calm before the storm right now. The election is fewer than three weeks away. Have you noticed that uh, they give you advice for election day? All of a sudden, it sounds like an emergency preparedness pamphlet. It's like, uh, <laughs> locate your polling place in advance, bring bottled water, contact your neighbors, don't touch the doorknob if it's too hot. It could, this could be quite a mess. There are already long lines. Voting is underway in several states, including California, where not only are people casting their ballots, they're also cleaning them. To our local elections now, Sacramento County officials are asking people to stop disinfecting their mail-in ballots. The Registrar of Voters says that they have received at least 100 ballots damaged by disinfectant alcohol spray. And in one case, the Registrar says that someone even microwaved their ballot. Well, that makes... That makes sense. What setting do you use to microwave a ballot? A potato? I have to say, if you're pre-rolling and microwaving your mail-in ballot, I'm okay with you sitting this one out vote-wise. I really am. <laughs> there are brazen attempts to steal this election going on already. After months of Trump yammering about how the vote is rigged, the vote is rigged, the vote is rigged, the California Republican Party stands accused of setting up illegal ballot boxes to collect votes. More than 50 unofficial ballot boxes have popped up around our state. The California Secretary of State and Attorney General have warned Republicans that if they do not remove those boxes by Thursday, they will face prosecution. But Trump is encouraging them to keep the boxes there and keep on trucking. Can you imagine the setting up boxes and telling people to drop their votes in the... I think what they've decided is the best way to prove there was voter fraud is to commit voter fraud. And it's easy to get confused. You know, what your drop-off box looks like, who knows what they look like? It varies from state to state and county to county. This is the official ballot. This is what an official ballot box in Orange County, California looks like. That is the official box. And this is a filing cabinet. This is not a... This is what... <laughs> The California GOP in Orange County would like you to use. The guy in the picture is the regional field director for them. They should stuff him in that box, is what they should do. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. There's no limit to what these people will do to steal this vote. These boxes are not official, no matter what they say on them. You must make sure. This is so important. You have to make sure you're using an officially sanctioned ballot box. For instance, this is not official. This is not official. <laughs> This is not official. There are, and there are no official ballot boxes in the men's room at Buffalo Wild Wings, okay? <laughs> Guillermo, you voted already, right? Yes, this morning I dropped out my ballot. Yes. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about that because I watched the video you posted to Instagram and I'm worried about the drop box you used. Let's look at that video. I'm so excited. I just filled out my ballot and now I'm going to drop it off at the official ballot box. It's right here. Right there. There you go. Boom, 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 boom. That's the sound of democracy. Well, one less vote for Kanye, I guess. <laughs> this is a weird one. Here's some news that doesn't involve Trump for a change. Uh, new development in the world of fruit. You know, this is, this is something called the Pink Glow Pineapple. It is a pineapple that's pink on the inside instead of yellow. It took them 15 years to develop, which makes them think they probably weren't working that hard on it, but <laughs> it looks just like a regular pineapple on the outside, but on the inside, as you can see, it looks like a uh, ham. <laughs> but Del Monte is selling these for $49 a pop, $49 each. We were able to find one today. And uh, late, oh, there it is. Wow. Oh my gosh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, say hello. <laughs> miracle. It is a miracle. The pink glow pineapple is here. Wow. Um, all right, so uh, uh, they cut off the crowns. Apparently, they do this because then they replant them immediately. But it's supposed to be sweeter than a regular pineapple. Sorry to ruin the, uh, <laughs> the CGI magic, but <laughs> it comes with this certificate saying that this is the real thing this is not a bogus counterfeit pine glow pineapple it has an actual <laughs> like thing that goes along with it uh but here we go okay all right so let's uh if you don't mind i'm gonna cut this up i'm sure you're all impressed by my knife skills yeah i've been to hawaii <laughs> okay all right we'll get that there and then 
Guillermo, you want to come over here and try some of this? Of course. All right, here we go. All right. I didn't wash my hands, but go ahead. Yeah. It's okay, boss. Now, take a bite, and we'll try this together, and we'll see what we think. Wow, this is real good. You know what it tastes like? Pineapple, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's good pineapple. Tastes like exactly yeah. like a pineapple. Does it taste any different to you than a regular pineapple? Not at all, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me neither. All right. Well, here, finish this up. Take that over there. There you go. Don't say nothing good came from 2020. And by the way, if Trump loses, this is the kind of thing we're going to be doing every night on the show. <laughs> the president is on the road this month. He is uh, burning massive amounts of jet fuel to spread his message and germs all over big crowds of supporters in swing states, even as we learned today that his son Barron tested positive for the virus earlier this month. He is negative for it now. And look at this map. Cases of the virus are going up in every state that's colored red, which is almost all of them. None of the states are going in the right direction. The second wave is clearly underway. And while you'd expect something like this might make the president think twice about these unmasked egomania orgies he's involved with, <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't think twice about anything. Most of the time, he doesn't even think once. The president was in <laughs> Iowa tonight where cases are surging. Over the last 24 hours, the positivity rate in Iowa is almost 22%. 10,000 strong are expected tonight, so that'll be uh, 2,200 infected people. Even, and even though his own White House put out guidelines saying there should be no gatherings in central Iowa with more than 25 people that are doing this, that applies only if it's not a tribute to him. I wonder if the president passed this on his way into Des Moines, though, because they put up a billboard outside the location of the rally. <laughs> Trump COVID super spreader event. <laughs> that way. <laughs> that is literally a sick burn. So last night, the president had a rally in Jonestown. I mean, Johnstown. Not that there's a difference. Um, he was feeling the Pennsylvania love and once again promised to shower affection on the crowd, whether they want it or not. I could have stayed in the basement of the White House or maybe the top floor of the White House. I could have done that, but I'm the president of the United States. I can't do that. I got to get out, and I have to meet people, and I have to see people, and I know it's risky to do that, but you have to do what you have to do. You know, I'm the president. I can't sit in the basement and say, let's wait this thing out. I'm not going to do that. And now I'm immune, they tell me. I'm immune. I could come down and start kissing everybody. I'll kiss every guy, man and woman, man and woman. Look at that guy, how handsome he is. I'll kiss him. Not, not with a lot of enjoyment, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's dancing to YMCA, he's kissing guys. Is it possible that we might be gearing up for the greatest October surprise of all time? <laughs> Mike Pence is my boyfriend. It was a very sexy rally, a lot of pillow talk last night. Obama used to send them pillows, maybe from the pillow man on Fox. Did you ever see a man advertise so much? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. the biggest advertise. I think he's the greatest advertising genius, Mike. He's the greatest advert. If I gave him our budget, it, you wouldn't be able to do anything else but watch Trump ads. The pillow man. I tell you, I never saw so many ads in my life. Every day, it's a pillow, the pillow. Now he came out with a sheet, and I'm going crazy. That's all. That's all we need now is a new sheet. That's right. Some of your fans could use new sheets. They cut eye holes out, out of the old ones. And yeah, But does he, I mean, does this man do anything but watch cable news? All the pillow ads, it's too much. The president is trailing Joe Biden bigly in every poll, and I think it's starting to, to get under his thick orange rind. I'm running against the single worst candidate in the history of presidential politics. And you know what that does? That puts more pressure on me. Can you imagine if you lose to a guy like this? <laughs> yes, I imagine that every night as I go to bed. As I fall asleep, I imagine it. And I hope you will understand it soon. There was a lot of Biden bashing at the rally last night. His new line of attack is to claim that Joe Biden isn't nice. He has no clue. And he's not a nice guy. You know, just so you understand, not a nice guy. If he was a nice guy, I wouldn't hit him like this. But he's not a nice guy. He's a bad guy. He's always been a dummy. But he's always been, he's never been. No, no, in his best of years, he was considered a dumb guy. <laughs> Take it from me. I looked right into an eclipse. I know dumb guys. <laughs>
Trump had a lot to spout about in Johnstown last night, so we slowed it down for another fun edition of Drunk Donald Trump. What a night that was. Remember that night? Donald Trump has won the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I think we just got a glimpse of every dinner conversation after he's out of office. All kidding aside, this is a man who is spinning out. Yesterday, he retweeted a conspiracy theory that Obama and Biden staged the killing of Osama bin Laden and that bin Laden is still alive. Our president tweeted this. And this is something. You know, there's supposed to be a debate tomorrow night, but since Trump wouldn't agree to the virtual format that they wanted to have because he tested positive for the coronavirus. He backed out altogether. So because there was no debate, Biden agreed to do a town hall on ABC that night. So Trump today announced he will also be doing a town hall, but on NBC and at the same time as Biden. So that sells it. Now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to vote for both of them, right? <laughs> I guess. Thanks, NBC. First The Apprentice, now this. Why not a new Bill Cosby special while we're at it? <laughs> there is no good reason to hold these events simultaneously. They could delay them. They could do it. Obviously, Trump wanted this because he knows he'll get better ratings than Joe Biden. Of course, more people will watch Trump. And that doesn't mean it. If my choices are watching a, a documentary about the Bill of Rights or a guy getting hit in the nuts with a shovel, I'm going shovel every single time. <laughs> But while Donald Trump is grabbing any spotlight he can find, Joe Biden is grabbing headlights. <laughs> Joe Biden is doing rallies for traffic. <laughs> At least if the speech gets boring, you can listen to the radio, I guess. But these are challenging times, for sure. There's no doubt about that. And when things get dark, I turn to a particular member of my family, someone who sees the good in every situation. And since we need that badly right now, I would like to share some words of hope from my cousin Mickey. So if you're needing a little bit of help to feel hopeful, for the future and for your present day. I do simple things. Sometimes the simplest things are the best things. Like do things that make you happy. Like for me, sit on a unicorn, surround yourself with balloons and lights and drink from a, a lollipop straw. It, 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 can, it can make your heart and fill your soul up. And it's something so simple. It's something so simple, as simple as being kind to somebody and, um, you know, believe, just believe in something. It doesn't matter what you believe in, just believe in something good. Believe in unicorns, believe in the, you know, anything in the, in the heavens, believe in anything that feels good. But I think believing in unicorns is, um, is realistic. And I think if it makes you feel good, why not? Don't ever give up. That's right, don't, don't ever give up. <laughs> And no, she's not kidding. We have a good show for tonight. <laughs> Leslie Jones is here. We've got music from Woodkid, and we'll be right back with John Cusack. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button, and if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>